Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malzberg. We have an Al-Qaeda problem. That's what we have today in a scale that we've never seen before. That's our problem. Remember, when we didn't do anything after 1993, the World Trade bombing, it led them to the 1998 uh, Eastern African Embassy bombing, U.S. embassies in Africa killed hundreds. Then USS Cole killed uh, U.S. sailors in, uh, in Yemen. So, yet less than a year than that, after no action, and they're saying, well, this is really not our fight, we had 9-11 kill 3,000 Americans. This is an Al-Qaeda-inspired group uh, that certainly has Al-Qaeda ties that now has the capability to tap people with Western passports to send them back to Europe and the United States for terrorist activity. You, you, That's a problem for us. Yeah, absolutely. And welcome back to the show, folks. Joining us now is uh, Governor John Sununu, former governor of New Hampshire, former chief of staff to President George H.W. Bush. Hello, Governor. It's good to be back. Always great. You guys are going great. Thank you. Good, good to see you. Always great to talk to you, sir. Appreciate you being on on our, our big day here. Uh, all right. First of all, you know, this is something that uh, not too many people have talked about, as, uh, as Congressman uh, Rogers did right there. Uh, the threat that, uh, that all this poses to us here, even on our homeland. Yeah, this is, this is a very serious issue. Uh, this group is is the worst of the worst. Uh, what they're doing in Iraq is establishing a foundation. Uh, they have the capacity uh, to reach out to those, as as, Ro as Mike Rogers pointed out, to those with Western passports. And and frankly, it is a product of of a whole series of bad decisions over the last two or three years that has just uh, allowed Maliki to continue his terrible governance and create an opportunity uh, for these really uh, bad folks uh, to come in and do what they've done in the last week. Absolutely. And here you got a president who is still thinking about it. Now, I don't know what the answer is, Governor. I don't know if it's too late to bomb, who we would bomb, where we would bomb. But the fact is, on Friday, he held a press conference, said, I'm going to think about it for over the weekend or, or in the next few days with my, my military people. This was already too late, in my view. And here it is Monday, and we still don't know what he's going to do. Well, about the only thing I've seen that they've done is ramped up a press operation, feeding all the friendly press they have out there uh, with suggestions that this problem is a result of the Bush administration, which hadn't been in, which has not been in office for over uh, six years here. For six years, this this administration's first reaction to any crisis is to figure out how to blame somebody else. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't disagree with you. Now, let me ask you this. What about uh, the possibility that we form an alliance with Iran in Iraq? Well, when you do bad things or when you fail to do good things, you get a whole sequence of events, and, and all the pieces of, those, of, of that sequence is sometimes terrible. Uh, the failure to really execute a status of forces agreement which meant we could not keep our 10,000 troops there. The failure for Obama not to do that is now having this whole series of consequences, and each little domino of, of consequences is moving forward. And a horrible domino uh, is to, to have uh, Iran be able to claim that they are a partner of the U.S. and the Middle East. I assure you, that all of our friendly Arab countries that have stood with us in conflicts in the past, like Saudi Arabia, are not going to be thrilled if that kind of a situation comes to be. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, the Bergdahl situation? I mean, you know, Governor, you can't you can't make it up. And one day it's one thing, the next day it's something even bigger. Uh, we were all focused on Bergdahl, the circumstances surrounding his disappearance. Many say he deserted. Uh, should we have released the uh, the five uh, Taliban leaders? And uh, now that's almost off the map, uh, media-wise, because of what's going on now in Iraq. But there is a common thread here, is there not? Incompetence. Uh, it's absolutely there. You have an administration. That, that doesn't seem to understand what the responsibility of the presidency and the executive branch of the United States is. And, and frankly, they really seem to think that the American public isn't paying attention. This, this fiasco with the loss of uh, all of the emails uh, from Lois Lerner 
uh, is just unbelievable to me. And, and there doesn't seem to be any serious concern raised in the press about an administration trying to out Nixon Nixon uh, with the loss of materials like that. Yeah, no, they're, they're, the, the IRS is, is totally off the map of the mainstream media and has been for quite some time. They could say that Lois Lerner disappeared tomorrow, and I don't know that they would report it, to be honest with you. It's just, uh, it's a shame. Well, look, this, this crisis in Iraq, getting back to that, is, is a serious issue. And, and I know the president was, I, I think the headline I saw was exhausted, and that's why he had to be playing golf in Palm Springs. But the fact is, is he better get uh, his uh, senior advisors and get some good advice on how to deal with this mess he's created before it truly gets out of hand. All right. You brought up the five Taliban leaders that we returned. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing them somehow, at least peripherally, associated with what's going on in Iraq. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me either. Let me ask you about Hillary uh, and her role in all this. You know, the, the, there was a Gallup poll about a month ago, a governor, that said that um, uh, respondents wanted to see the next president uh, have different policies by 65 percent, I think, wanted different policies than Barack Obama. So I'm thinking, okay, how does Hillary start separating herself? When does she start separating herself from Barack Obama on anything? I mean, what, did, what, what is she going to run away from? And I'm thinking, okay, you know, if she could, she should have did it on Bergdahl. If she could, she should be doing it on Iraq. Uh, but she really can't because she's a part of all this, is she not? Yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting dance uh, between now and, and when she might announce in uh, after the November uh, 2014 election, sometime that either in December, January, February, give us her decision. And I think between now and then, you're going to see uh, what I call the salami theory of separation, a thin slice of difference here and another thin slice of difference there until she can build it up. Um, look, I don't blame her for wanting to disassociate herself from Obama. I think that's the, the strongest condemnation of how bad this administration is. But of course, she carries the burden on issues like Benghazi, uh, on, on the issues of our failure to deal constructively with opportunities in the Middle East and, and, and just leaving a vacuum of leadership around the world that has produced uh, the kinds of crises we have in the Ukraine. Um, she was part of that. And, and she's going to have to create a very clever narrative uh, to separate herself. I don't think she's going to be able to do it. What, what have you thought of uh, her book uh, tour interviews as you've watched them, I'm assuming you have? I don't think she's very happy with the way this has turned out over the last week or 10 days, two weeks. Um, she she uh, has, in my opinion, demonstrated that she's kind of lost a step politically. Uh, she has really missed uh, uh, in terms of some of her responses. I thought her interview with Diane Sawyer was extremely clumsy. I thought she dug a deep hole for herself that she still hasn't gotten out. And I, I have a feeling that all of this will, will be part of her analysis as to whether or not she's going to run. And, and if this kind of difficulty continues, she may make the decision that it's in her best interest, her family's best interest, uh, not to make the run. But but uh, it has not been a good couple of weeks for her on her book tour. What about uh, very quickly, uh, Eric Cantor? Uh, what are the repercussions uh, for the uh, for the Republican Party, if any? I mean, the, some on the left are trying to make this out as a a huge disaster for the Republicans, and I, I don't see it that way. But what about you? Oh, I, I, I let the left keep thinking that it has some kind of a momentous impact. <laughs> I, I don't think it, it has. Uh, look, every once in a while, even uh, uh, very long-term um, incumbents get lazy, get sloppy, get arrogant, and treat their constituents in a way uh, that, that turns off their own base. And all of a sudden, somebody comes along with an issue that seems to be a bit attractive to them, and it gives them an excuse not to be supportive. And I think it's just an example of, of uh, if you will, hubris uh, coming with power. Uh, and, and Eric just never saw it coming until it was too late, although, frankly, he, he did spend a ton of money in his campaign. I just think it was a candidate, it was an incumbent turning into a bad candidate, 
and losing his election. Gotcha. Here. I just want to get this in. We got 30 seconds, Governor. George H.W. Bush jumping out of that plane at 90, a man who can't even walk. I mean, what a profile in courage. Look, uh, he's a great man. I served uh, as his chief of staff. I went up to Kennebunk to watch the jump. I think conservatives ought to be taking a good, hard look again at the four years that George Bush served. I think they're going to, if they're fair about it this time around, going to recognize that this guy was truly a great conservative uh, president for the country and, and made a huge difference well, with conservative principles on how this country dealt around the world and domestically. He passed more domestic, significant domestic legislation than any president except perhaps Lyndon Go Johnson since World War II. Governor, great to hear from you, sir. Good to see you. Thank we'll you. see you soon. Thank you very much. Governor John Sununu, ladies and gentlemen.